Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chess 24 Legends of Chess Tournament. It's uh, another game uh, from the legend of Vasily Vanchuk versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, this is uh, the Armageddon game. So after that win by Vasily in game 1, uh, game 2 ended in a draw. Then in game 3, uh, Vasily uh, again tried uh, his Bogo Indian but Magnus improved on the uh, line he played uh, in, in round 1 uh, and won game 3. So he equalized the match and then game 4 was also a fairly quick draw. So this is now Armageddon. And for those of, new, those of you who are new to modern online chess, uh, Armageddon means that white gets 5 minutes on the clock uh, and the black gets 4 minutes on the clock. However, if the game ends in a draw, then it's uh, black who wins the match. So here, uh, Chucky needs, needs to win the game uh, in order to win the match. But uh, it's important to, to mention that he is the first one to get to Armageddon against Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus, uh, uh, even if he wins, wins, will not be getting the full 3 points. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out and let's see uh, what uh, happens here. I don't know who won the coin toss uh, or uh, or how it got that uh, uh, Vasily got white and Magnus got black. Uh, but if I had to choose, I'd say I'd say Magnus won the coin toss and he, he chose black. But it's, it's hard to say. Uh, if any of you do know, do share in the comments so we can share with everyone. So without further ado, uh, we, uh, Vasily goes for d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, e6, and now bishop to g5, the so-called uh, Serevan attack. Uh, and something um, uh, Chuk is using to throw Magnus off guard as he doesn't want uh, an easy position for black to play. He wants to create some madness over the board so he can uh, hope for, for, for a win. Because this is uh, 5 minutes against 4 minutes without increment. So if you go into time trouble, you are most likely to lose the game. So h6, bishop to h4, and bishop to h7. Now we have e3. Uh, and b6. Now Magnus wants to get his bishop on this beautiful diagonal and now comes bishop to e2. Knight to c3 is a known move in this position, however bishop to e2 is a new move, so already as of move 6 we have a completely new game. He wants to of course counter uh, Carlsen's bishop on this long diagonal. So bishop b7, we have bishop to f3, now threatening to capture on b7 and here we have a, th a, a trade on f3. Captures, captures. Uh, and knight to e4. Now uh, Carlsen wants to of course exchange as many pieces as possible. Uh, and uh, uh, Vasily says okay but queen to c2 first. So you capture that, I'm gonna capture the knight on e4. So Magnus defends it with f5 and only now does a chucky trade. We have captures, captures and now knight to e5. So a very active square for the knight for both of these knights to be uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, more precise, uh, we have castles by Magnus, and now uh, here Magnus allows knight to g6, this fork uh, to the queen and the rook. However, it is a very complicated idea, but it is the best move for white. Uh, uh, Vasily did not play it; he castled instead. But I will show it since uh, this is a you know a video where we show what could have happened. Uh, and knight to g6. Uh, this uh, was not played because you have to spend a lot of time calculating queen to b4 check. Knight blocks uh, and then after this rook moves and now the idea is a3. You give up this pawn to get this knight back into the game with an attack on the queen. So captures uh, and then an attack on the queen. Queen to a6 and now you just win back your pawn with captures, captures and captures with an attack on the rook. Uh, and uh, well just a very strong position for white. So uh, this could have been played but like I said if you start thinking, you, you you get into time trouble and you are definitely going to lose. So, uh, Vasily does well. He just castles without spending too much time. And the queen to e8. Now Magnus just wants to control these squares here. Uh, we have f3 now, challenging the knight. Uh, so the knight needs to move back. We have knight f6 and now knight to c3. Uh, and here uh, Magnus kicks back uh, the, the knight from e5. So d6 and now knight back to d3. Uh, we have knight b to d7, continuing development, and now comes rook uh, a to e1. So basically white has completed the development and now needs to figure out how to push for a win. Uh, as if you don't win, you lose the match. So queen f7 by Magnus, preparing to bring the, the last rook into the game, and now e4. Uh, we have f captures on e4, f captures on e4 uh, with a, an excellent center for white and uh, a very nice open f file for the rook. So d5 by Magnus, uh, sorry not d5, e5 by Magnus and here d5, just closing the position. Uh, we have queen to g6, now getting the queen out of harm's way, uh, now that uh, so the knight can move. Uh, and here comes knight to b5 and the situation on the clock is two, min two and a half minutes for... Uh, Vasily and some a minute and a half for Magnus, but he started with a minute less, so it is to be expected. 
uh, we have rook f to c8, you do need to defend this pawn here. Uh, and now that this has been played, knight to b4. Uh, the man who said that the strongest move to find is a move with the knight back uh, brings both of his knights forward. Uh, we have a6 challenging this knight, and now uh, now comes not the retreat of the knight, but rather knight to c6, going for this knight to e7, hoping for a, a royal fork, but Magnus just moves it, uh, just king to h8, so now he has to move the knight. Knight to c3, and now comes rook back to f8, as it is no longer necessary to defend the c8 pawn, and now b4 by Chucky. Uh, we have rook to f7, and then now comes rook to f3. Both players now want to double up uh, on the f-file, uh, which they do. So rook a to f8, rook e to f1, uh, and now comes knight to b8. Black just wants to trade off as many pieces as possible. This is one very strong knight. So knight captures, we have rook captures, at least now you... Uh, well, dislodge the rook for, uh, from the open f file at least for a bit. And queen to a4, going after this a6 pawn, but also maybe queen to c6 will be an idea going after the c7 pawn. So here, rook to a8, defending, and now not queen to c6, which could be very interesting, but rather c5, a an incredibly strong move, uh, reminiscent of um, uh, of uh, Vasily's c5 move against Garry Kasparov uh, in their 1991 Linares uh, uh, clash, where he just freed the c4 square for his knight. Not, uh, not any connection to this game, I just thought of it when I saw c5. Uh, and here, the problem with b5 is that me, it, although it could be played, it requires too much calculation because you have to see what happens after knight captures on b5. You cannot capture because the rook hangs uh, and you give up the e4 pawn. Now cd6, we have c captures on d6, knight captures with a nice fork here. Now comes queen d4, check king h1, and now rook back, and now uh, white is uh, up a pawn for the moment, but who who's to say who's doing what here? It's, uh, I mean, it, it's incredible. Uh, just to even start calculating this, especially with a game with no increment. So here, after c5, we have b captures on c5 by Magnus, b captures on c5, and now d captures on c5. So doubling his c pawns, uh, but now queen to c6, going after both the pawns. Rook to b8, now hoping to get some rook to b2 action, as the queen here could uh, be used to... Uh, uh, to threaten checkmates. Sorry, my, my arrow game is a bit off this video. Uh, and here just rook to g3. Uh, not going for uh, for this capture right away. First he wants to get his uh, rook, uh, uh, well, his king some safety. He doesn't want this queen to be attacking it. Queen to h7, a bit of a passive square for the queen, but he is uh, preparing to capture uh, this, uh, this pawn as soon as this rook either moves uh, or is defended as you don't want to lose it. So rook to f5, now uh, with with some idea so of capturing an e5, so rook b to f8, just uh, uh, doubling up on the f file once again. So you have to be very careful here, like uh, do you capture the e5 pawn now? Uh, if you do, uh, then just knight captures on e4, and uh, well, now this is threatened, this is threatened, the rook to f1 checkmate is threatened, uh, not, not something you want to do. So rook g back to f3, uh, and now comes queen to g6. The queen returns to a very active square, and again, some ideas like rook b8 to, to b2 with a threat of mate could uh, come into, into play. Uh, and here, rook captures on e5 is definitely the way to go, as now you don't have to worry about any discovery since there's another rook on f3. Rook e5 here uh, is definitely uh, a good move. Uh, queen captures on a6 also. Queen captures on c5, on the other hand, the move uh, Vasily played not so much uh, because, uh, well, uh, because the queen is now in range of the knight here. So knight captures on e4 is a possibility right away. But Magnus goes for rook to b8 instead. He first... Um, wants to get his, his rook over to b2, uh, but now again uh, you could just, uh, well you could try a lot of things, queen a7 now is a very 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 nice idea because after rook to b2 you, you can just push away the queen with rook to g3 so it's not not a problem. However, uh, Vasily played the only possible move that, well not the only, but uh, one of the few possibilities that lose the game on the spot, he played queen to f2 and that's just terrible. Uh, because it blunders the game on the spot, so feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Magnus uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that now. Uh, well, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the knight capture on e4 comes with both an attack on the queen and on the knight. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on e4. And now the point is, this is attacked, this is attacked, this is attacked twice. 
uh, and also, well, the most important thing is that if knight captures an e4, then you allow rook to be one check, and there is no square for the king now because the queen blocked the king. So this is uh, what uh, results in in, in uh, Vasily's demise. And now, of course, you'd have to give up your queen with captures, captures, and captures, but then you're just left with a queen against a knight. Another possibility would be, for example, after knight captures an e4, uh, to go for rook captures on f7, try and go for a nice queen sacrifice like this, but still after queen d3, and even if you get a pair of rooks off the board, check, check, and king h7, uh, you're still a rook and knight against the queen, and there's just no way uh, you can you can even hope to to to, to play this. So uh, after this knight captures an e4 move, uh, Vasily immediately resigned as he saw what happened when he played queen to f2, and Magnus wins the match. But uh, uh, Vasily gets one point, and he's the only person to get uh, one point against uh, against Magnus in this entire tournament so far. Uh, no one was able to reach uh, the Armageddon against Magnus, so. Uh, brilliant play by uh, the legend of Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, and uh, some of you have been saying that, okay, maybe it's not fair to decide matches with Armageddon, but you have to decide them somehow. I mean, it's it's better than a coin toss. And uh, the, the, these are still the preliminaries of the Legends of Chess tournament. In the knockout phases of the tournament, there will be four rapid games, then they go into two uh, blitz games, and only after two blitz games will there be an Armageddon. But, you, I mean, you have to... Uh, you know, you have to decide somehow, and I, I do believe it is better than a coin toss. So yeah, uh, excellent play by uh, by both of them. Magnus uh, emerges victorious in the end, uh, and uh, we are, you know, uh, the end result is that we are uh, all enjoying the show. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Adam Geffert, uh, Henry Hawkinson, uh, Tom Haythorne, Wait, uh, Rainer Gibbons, and Mike Gert for contribution contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Legends of Chess uh, tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday. Uh, sorry, Saturday.